All right, hey guys, Kevin the Toy Smuggler here. Uh, uh, <clears throat> I knew I was going to do a video tonight, but I had almost no clue what I was wanting to do. And I got to thinking about uh, earlier today, uh, several times, uh, talking about uh, vintage Star Wars, and I've been talking about collecting and stuff like that. So I thought, you know, what we, you know, we're just chilling out here, you know, just uh, getting to know each other and stuff like that. So I just thought I'd kind of talk about my uh, original vintage Star Wars collection. And this is the my first ever Darth Vader case I ever had. So let's take a look inside and see what the smuggler has here. Let's see what we got here. Usually when you open these, they just become a hot mess real quick. So let's see if I can do this. Well, luckily I might. Aha, there we go. Make sure I don't hit the uh, Frazetta head back here. Scoot it up. Yeah, if you guys didn't catch the video this morning, I'm going to show y'all where the Frazetta Def Dealer head is. Come along pretty good. Hopefully, uh, by Sunday night, I'll, I'll have this baby knocked out. That's, that's my goal. We'll see if I get it done or not. But yeah, I got two uh, inserts here. Got the original insert. Not too bad. Got a little bit of wear in it and everything. But I, I you know, I don't mind a little wear on something. I know a lot of people, it's all about getting things pristine and stuff like that. But I, I like the little aging and stuff in it. So it's, it's you know, I had it was a kid. You know, that's lucky to even survived at all. So. And then I got one of the inserts. Now, this came with a uh, modern. Uh, they done a re-release on these Darth Vader cases uh, and stuff. And they come out with different, uh, same shape, as you can see here. But they did with the bright yellow. And I do like the bright yellow because it really, if you look at it with the case, it does contrast quite well. So, so that was kind of cool. So, like I said, they just changed it up so, you know, all these repo people wouldn't have a cow. Let me get this white background here off so it won't glare so bad here. Let's see, I'm actually going to... There we go. That helped. There's my buddy Rob Brown. He used to work for Marvel. Uh, he was, he did the uh, Undertaker's first comic book. He did Kiss, uh, Daredevil, and, and many more. So he did a lot of great stuff. <clears throat> All right. Got a lot of cool things here. Uh, an original Darth Vader here. Let's see. There we go. And the coolest thing is they never did. That's that's a one amazing thing. You know, they a lot of these original figures on this first wave, they just kept them, they just changed the card backs and they kept these Darth Vaders on the shelf for years. All the way up to 80, I guess 85, I guess. And uh and I actually got the Gamorrean guard in here. I used to not keep him in here, but he will not fit in the uh, the old trays. I got three of those old trays. You know, he will not fit in there at all. He's just way too fat. And the Darth Vader case is about the only case you can find a spot that he'll fit in comfortably. So I got the medical droid with all his little legs and stuff. And there's just something about, about these old sculpts on these toys that I just, you know, don't get me wrong. I know the, you know, the, all the new stuff is all high tech and stuff like that. But I just love just all the original uh, sculpts on these things. It just the mastery these guys had back in those days. All right, and here's my Luke, Bespin Luke. This is one of my favorite toys as a kid. When he came out, man, this guy was snow adventures outside in the woods michael hey what's up brother doing good man yeah just showing off some vintage star wars tonight and everything so this is going to try to chill out a little bit uh one of the uh bespin guards And one of my favorite uh, Star Wars figures is the uh, the Rebel Snowtrooper. 
And guys, speaking of Michael Gunter here, he's the, uh, see him up here. He's the guy that owns the battlegrounds, him and Jason. And like I said, uh, unfortunately tonight is their uh, last night because this COVID virus going on, uh, uh, town of Dalton is going on a, like a two weeks uh, curfew thing. Almost all your stores going to be closing. I think only drive throughs and uh, I think convenience stores uh, and grocery stores and stuff like that. So we're kind of like on timeout for the next two weeks. But good news is uh, Battlegrounds has got an amazing eBay and go to their website uh, or give them a call. There should be somebody at the store. Anything that you're looking for, give Michael a call, give him, put him on the hunt for something because he'll probably end up calling me. Uh, hey, Kevin, where we got this buried upstairs at? And I'll have to give him directions or I'll have to go up there and dig it out for him. And we'll be glad to hunt something down for you. Give you a call back, send you uh, text you pictures give you a price and then put it in the mail for you. So, you know, they're still, don't worry about eBay, come to Battlegrounds, give us a call. And I think Mike's going to be popping up some live feeds of the stores. He's going to probably have some different sales going on. So go to the Battlegrounds Facebook and hang out there every day, check it periodically and see what Mike is posting. Cause like I said, it's a great store guys, great owners. You just can't beat them. So make sure we just keep supporting them for this tough time. Hey, what's up, Mikey? Yeah, doing great, brother. Uh, getting ready to start this whole curfew thing. So I just thought uh, I'm going to hang out tonight and just talk about some uh, vintage Star Wars stuff. And like I said, this is a Rebel Soldier. I got like, I think I got seven or nine of them, something like that. But this was one of my favorite. I just love the design of this character. I, the, whoever sculpted this done an amazing job with it and stuff. I, I lo Well, Empire Strikes Back was my favorite movie. So... So that, that kind of might be a little bit to it and stuff like that, you know. And uh, and I love some snow troopers. Oh, I love snow troopers. Yeah, love snow troopers. I don't know. Something about that design is just cool. They One thing I did like about the snow troopers, they's a little bit stockier, a little bit thicker than, the, you know, the skinny storm troopers. They just seemed a little bit more menacing. And, I, and that's something I really liked about them. And it is... And their sculpt today, still, uh, just very nice sculpt. Look at the detail in this thing. I mean, these guys, they truly knew what they were doing on, from an artistic point of view. And another huge favorite of mine is your Tuscan Raiders Sand People. Uh, they, these are the same ones uh, you got to see uh, if you're a fan of the Bantha and the whole crazy stuff. This is one of the guys who got to uh, stand around and pose with the Bantha and stuff. And the funny thing is, just kind of give you guys a secret. Uh, almost all the pictures of the, the toy of the Bantha on the box was done by me and all the capes that you see the guys wearing. Construction paper. <laughs> I didn't have enough. I, it, I cannot find the vinyl this color. It's insane. Uh, no, I did not sculpt as a child. Uh, I actually tried it one time back in 1997. I piddled around on four or five pieces. And me personally, I didn't know any other artists back in those days. So I thought I really sucked at it. So I took those pieces, I put them up, and I just quit. And then uh, I've been sculpting now for, uh, see, this past November made 10 years. So, uh, and I wish I never gave it up. I, I should have, but like I said, I didn't have any kind of, any artist that was older than me and had a little bit more knowledge who could like say, hey, no, you got, there might be something here. You keep at it, you know, but I didn't, I didn't have any kind of influence back in those days. And, and I lost several, probably lost a good seven or eight years. So I could have been sculpting 18 years by now. So, so, so the lesson here, guys, if you something, if you love something in your heart, and see back then, I, I always wanted to make toys my whole life. So, so if you have a passion for something, don't think you're going to touch it for a few months and become great at it. If you got a true passion for it, just get in there, study it, try to find other people. Don't give up. Consistently stay on that path of that craft, and it will work out. And like I said, I'm just glad that I come to my senses the second time around and went with it. Let's see here. Well, like I said, I, I lacked a, a mentor early on, but the, the guy right here, Rob Brown, I ran into him back in 2004, and that's when we first met. I was working on a comic. Like I said, he used to work for Marvel, 
And like I said, he done the Undertaker and stuff like that, comics like that. And then he started training me the pencil and ink, you know, the black and white comic style and artwork. And he was the one who pushed me to go into doing the digital stuff. And I was so did not want to do it. But it was the smartest thing I ever do is it started taking my artwork and mixing it with the computer medium and coming out with the best quality product that I can make. Well, anyway, the whole sculpting thing happened was uh, 10 years ago. After uh, see, so be 2009, it was November 2009. Uh, we was at a convention at Halloween, and anyway, he was talking about he trying to get this guy, I think in Virginia or North Carolina, something like that, wanting to make him toys of his werewolf. The what he's wearing here in the shirt, I know you can't see it that well. So, anyway, but it never worked out. The guy said he didn't want to do it for money because he it was too much pressure. So, anyway, I just seen how disappointed Rob was, so I went back. Uh, after Halloween, when that sh uh, show was over with, and I spent a whole week thinking about how to sculpt his werewolf. And I remember in an article of Toy Fair on uh, Claver Moore talking to the seven steps on how to create an action figure, the sculpting part of it. So anyway, I went to Hobby Lobby that Friday, got all the materials. By Sunday afternoon, I had a 10 inch tall werewolf and boom. I took it to Rob, and Rob just had a fit, went nuts, screaming at his neighbors. I mean, the guy just went bonkers. And he said, dude, quit drawing, quit painting. You're a professional sculptor from now on. And boom, and I've not stopped since. So that's that's the, the short version on how I went from not sculpting for years to boom, just doing it overnight that fast. So, Tim, how you doing, brother? Glad you can join us this evening. Uh Talking a little bit about sculpting and uh, showing off uh, my vintage uh, collection of Star Wars that I have here. This is not all I got, but this is my, my pride and joy case, so to speak. Let's see. Yeah, the Def Dealer. Yeah, I'm excited about that, too. Uh, give you guys another quick look at that real fast. See where you're at. And like I said, this is going to be the 8-inch scale Mego style retro figure. And I got to make all the armor and everything separate where we can put the armor and everything on him. And, of course, the big, huge axe. So, so I'm going to try to get close. Let you see the beads here. So all that will be toned down. Because what I'll end up probably doing, guys, when I get this done, I'll probably be uh, molding it in resin, making a, making a mold. And I'll probably be pouring wax in there and then taking that out and trying to even fine-tune that but it all depends uh what everybody thinks about it so let's see here let's see here the meal all right people are stopping popping on here i love it the other also long came for the uh other people that also love kevin the toy smuggler when covid 19 is over you should go all go bowling hey hey Funny thing is, I'm actually from a huge family of professional bowlers. I, my mother, uh, my aunt, my grandmother, oh my gosh, they all got the 500 patches. They've all been up there to the professional tournaments up Niagara Falls. They're, they're crazy, man. So I grew up in a bowling alley. I kid you not. I used to remember uh, either I was drawing at the bowling alley or getting in the fights as a kid at the bowling alley. So what do you expect, guys? Come on. So, see here. Here we go. The one of my first figures as a kid. And I really love this character right here. When I when that movie first came out, I was just so in awe with the original. Star Wars was such an inspiration to me as an artist. As a as a as a very small kid, it really was. It was. It just fueled my imagination, and it just really made me feel like, you know, anything is possible and everything, and that's why I loved it so much. And I know a lot of people do not talk about these characters, but I am going to, because I love, like the old Hammerhead and Walrus Man, I just think these were uh, so underrated as characters I know they didn't have speaking parts and stuff like that, but I really do think that, you know, these are here, these characters right here, you can take these guys, set it with your Flash Gordons, Battlestar Galactica, 
the Star Wars, and they, they just blend in and all that. It just reeks the sci-fi feel, and I, I just love it about these things. And people just don't talk about these guys as much as what I think they should. Let's see here. Oh, no, 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 no. No, like I said, no, the Death Dealer is going to be a Mego version. Uh, yeah, not the Star Wars stuff. <laughs> but the funny thing is, uh, me and Michael Gunner, uh, we have talked about, I thought about doing a couple of like a Han Solo Mego or, or Princess Leia or Luke. Chewbacca would be very uh, aggravating because of all the fur. Uh, Stormtroopers would be uh, rather difficult to try to pull off. Now, a Snow Trooper could be plausible because it's he wore he wore a lot of cloth anything cloth goods in that Mego style you can probably pull off but when you're talking like a Venus Stormtrooper he is totally encased in armor so it wouldn't really that'd be hard to not saying you couldn't make it but I'm just saying it would it would not be cost effective to make versus a Han Solo a Han Solo character I can make it and resell it and make a profit and it wouldn't be too stupidly high so uh boba fett here let's see here uh oh the telescoping lightsaber i actually have some of those <clears throat> the ones i got is the from chris smith they're amazing by the way and i'm not i'm not gonna be talking about repos and all that crazy stuff tonight because it's like I said, we're here to have some fun and like i said but you know like I said, I'm not a huge completist, but I got a really nice uh, Boba Fett here. And I've had him, gosh, for ages. He's got just a little bit of paint wear on his chest armor, but I think that's just really adds to his look like he did in the movie. But he's very clean figure, great joints. <laughs> I leave my wife for a Migos slave land. <laughs> that's probably the funniest thing I've ever heard. Thank you, man. That that right there, I hope everyone else is getting a good laugh out of that because that is one amazing. That right there would make one heck of a t-shirt. <laughs> I'm gonna have to make that t-shirt one day. If I do, next time you, if I end up doing that, you get a free one, brother, because that is that is hilarious. That is amazing. <laughs> that ain't quickly land your butt in the doghouse for sure. But that is awesome. Two thumbs up, Emil. That that is amazing. That's totally funny. Uh, oh, the IG-88. Now kind of popular again because of uh, the Mandalorian. Uh, very cool action figure. And the funny thing is that the original one right here was probably the best quality made as far as these droids. They, they got a, the plastic they use has a little bit of flex, but... For whatever reason, I have yet to find a, one of these original ones with warped legs. And anywhere from the 95 powers of the force and up, the legs and arms are just horrible in these things. So I don't know what the deal was. Whatever, whoever mixed the plastic up for these guys knew what they were doing. Need a new Slave Leia action figure. That we do. And I wasn't fond of the Black Series. I think, unfortunately, since she was, you know, most a lot of skin show and all that articulation just really didn't, it just didn't look well. Yeah, she was posable and all that, but I just didn't, I think, as far as, you know, when a lot of skin is showing, all that articulation just kind of hurts it. So, we got a Chewbacca here. He's really great shape. Got the original gun here. Took forever to get this gun. Gosh, I lost mine as a kid and it probably took me 20 years to get another gun. Took forever. Extremely. And that's the only thing I have to say in my adulthood with these vintage Star Wars figures is uh, keeping up with trying to get all the extra. Yeah, here's a little pack of weapons here. And I gotta show you something, guys. I think it's in here. I don't think oh, there's a there's a something weird. When I got my case many, many years ago. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna show you guys this. 
Uh, I had one of these as a kid and it got uh, damaged really bad. So I ended up getting this one back in 96, I believe. And I don't know if the camera can catch this, but I'm going to try to show you guys this without making a hot mess. Because I know this piece that's taped in here is not a Star Wars. And I'm going to take my claim on what it is. But I want you guys, if you can get a good shot at it. Daddy. Hey, baby. Daddy's on the video. Everybody can see you. Go get Mama to do that. <laughs> that's my crazy daughter. Guys, yeah, oh, yeah, tomorrow. I'm, gl I'm glad she kind of butted in. Tomorrow at 2 o'clock, well, tomorrow morning, 8 o'clock, I'm doing the 1980s uh, Beast. I'm doing a quick video on 1980s Beast. And she just reminded me on tomorrow at two o'clock, it's meet the family. You get to meet my daughter, my wife. I finally get my wife in front of the camera. And I'm hoping to have a Santiago Cirillo via phone and stuff like that. But I'm going to try to get this camera in here and show you guys this. Let's we'll see if we can get the camera. All right. That right there. And it's still, that's the how the, I found it. And what that is, guys. It is a black, like, grappling hook. And if I'm not mistaken, it is the one from the Indiana Jones uh, Well of Souls playset. But like I said, I've never messed with it. I've left it alone all these years. Like I said, I've never taken it out, but I've looked at it, and it looks identical. So I, I, I'm afraid if I take it out, I'll end up losing it. And that's the only piece I got for the for Ramel, man, hadn't seen you in a day or two, brother. Where you been hiding out at? I was actually just thinking about you today, brother. Glad to see you on here tonight. Yeah, they're much more expensive now. Unfortunately, when Disney come out with these last five movies, all these figures right here, uh, the only thing that's not went up, you can actually pick up a decent Darth Vader case. Very reasonable. I, actually, I think... If I'm not mistaken, at Battlegrounds, we got seven or eight of them, something like that. And only one of them's not in great shape, but the rest of them, they're, they're really, they're pretty tough. And, uh, and I got one, it was, some kid like carved his name in the front of it. And, then, and I'm actually going to be, I'm actually sanding it down. I'm actually looking at making a pewter looking one and then putting the gloss on it. I thought a pewter Vader would look really cool. And I got like a another one and it's just full of Stormtroopers invaders. So let's see who else we got here. I think I got some Jawas over here. Let's see here. Yeah, I got a couple of Jawas. I got a Kate version and a non Kate version. And, well, here's the thing, uh, Mikey. Uh, Right now is probably going to be your best time to get back into collecting vintage Star Wars. Because uh, right now, even though The Mandalorian is having good success, it's not really... Uh, a, the movie's done so poorly, the stock in Star Wars is starting to kind of drop a little bit. So the, the, the hype right now nowadays is, you know, everything Marvel... And, of course, the new hype's going to be, by the end of this year, is going to be all about He-Man. I'm telling you guys, if you are, I know we're talking about Star Wars here, but if you are a He-Man fan, if you're missing any He-Man figures, get off your butt and go find them now. Because I'm here to tell you, by September, when the new He-Man figures hit Walmart, Target, and all that, the old ones are going to be stupid. I mean, He-Man figures and Skeletors are going to be $100 a piece. I'm not joking. They're already about, He-Man already 75. And I'm telling you, by September, he's going to be a solid 100. And you'll not find him cheaper. Unless you just find someone who's retarded or desperate for money. And they want to get rid of it. And you're good, and you're good friends with them. So, i telling you right now, go get your He-Man figures. But right now is an excellent time. With that surge of He-Man going up. And Star Wars is kind of going on the decline. Now is a good time to get back into your vintage collection. And they're, they're not hard to find. Stay off uh, Facebook Marketplace is probably the worst place to look for vintage Star Wars. You'll find them, but they're stupidly priced. They're extremely stupidly priced. Uh, the best places to get uh, decent Star Wars figures that I have found 
is either at uh, small toy conventions and flea markets. And like I said, at Battlegrounds, we got a lot of great selection. I mean, you can find, uh, we got really super nice stormtroopers like this right here, about $20. And that, that's not unreasonable. Uh, most of the figures we get up there are around 10 to 15. So they're, they're not bad. I mean, they're, they're at a, an affordable price right now. And I thought this was that grappling hook, but I can't remember what that is. But yeah, this is just some, oh, this is a different grappling hook. But yeah, there's some other uh, weapons. Uh, these are all original ones right here. I got them put up in here because I, I, the only bad thing I hate about uh, you, you put the weapons in their hands, you know, unlike the you know, Stormtrooper, uh, the Walrus Man, and even uh, the Hammerhead really holds the guns well. But a lot of the figures, the best one is your uh, X-Wing Luke Fire. He, he holds his weapon really good in his hand, but I don't actually have one for him. See, being busy with work and commissions. Oh, what kind of commissions, brother? What kind of artwork you do, brother? I can't remember. There's like, uh, I got like uh, nearly a dozen of you guys are artists. And so I have a hard time sometimes keeping up with, because everybody's got a different style and different mediums they're working with. Uh, so I got a lot of different artists that are come up. And I think that's really cool. I, one thing, guys, if you're an artist, hang around and watch, watch other artists. Talk to other artists. That's how you grow. You need to always constantly find an artist that you like that's better than you. That's how you get better. And you, you it's, a, it's a give and take kind of relationship. And I'm here to tell you. Any decent art artist that has any kind of soul of an artist about him will want to help you. So please, any guys, if I could help you guys in any shape or fashion, boom, get on here. I talk to people almost every day, giving tips on direction, on what materials to use. Any way I can help you guys, I'm here to help out. So I'm not one of these guys. If I know something, I'm going to hold the secret in from everybody just so I can hopefully be better. Ah, that's bull crap. So. I love being around people that's better artists than me because that just fires me up to work harder to try to be as good as they are. So that's how you got to be. I think that just works out so much better. Now, I was going to show you this, guys. I had some old material, vinyl. I make vinyl capes on the side, too. And I put this one on a, a Greedo. It just had a weird pattern to it. I just thought he looked kind of gangsterish a little bit. So kind of like, you know, if you remember rewatching the, the New Hope, you've seen a lot of these different Rodidians walking around. I figured he'd be like the, the head honcho of all of them and everything. That was my thought. See. Oh, that's cool. Hey, if you get a chance, uh, go to Sexton Creations Facebook and uh, send me some pics of that. I would love I love that uh, type of artwork. I, I am a huge fan of the old like Coca-Cola you seen the girls drinking the Coke and the kind of like almost like a pinup stuff, but a lot more classy. I love that old artwork, that old uh, through the the what is it, the root beer float uh, advertisements and stuff like that. No, that's that is a dying art, dude. That is amazing. I love to see it, man. Send me some of that. I love to check it out. See who else. Ah. Oh. But like I said, guys, in the morning, uh, eight o'clock. 1980s beast. See, Stephen. Okay. Let's see who here. Do you have any advice for starting? Out? I've been wanting to repaint any an X-wing pilot to match the blue squadron from Rogue One, but I'm not sure where to start. Uh, see here. Repaint on your. I'm pretty sure you're talking about doing a repaint on one of these guys. Uh, the biggest thing is go to like your. Hobby Lobby or Walmart, get the acrylic paints that either has the wine glass picture or the capital E on it. That paint sticks the best to these kind of plastics. Uh, make sure you clean these guys uh, like with Windex. Windex is really good because Windex is really good about getting any kind of like finger oils. Uh, these figures get a little sticky over the years. So uh, any kind of Windex that's got like ammonia in it, clean it real good with a toothbrush. Get all the loose paint you can off of it that it's, that's already, see, I've been needing to repaint mine. I've just been <laughs> too lazy to do it. So, 
but start with that and then uh it in small brushes small pretty much you put load the paint on your brush almost wipe it off back into your tray then go in the least it's better to go with two light coats than one two coat too thick you don't want thick paint on these things very very thin layers that's the key to making them look right and the other key is a uh get the gloss version of that and get the matte version and mix them up and you get like a semi-gloss that makes it look a little bit you don't want to use flat on here flat paint looks horrible on these but at the same token if you use a straight up gloss it's a bit too shiny so it's kind of you gotta gotta make a hybrid there and, and don't mix a lot of paint there's a couple of drops of each mix it up and like i said go very very thin get the smallest brush you can get and stuff yeah, another underrated character here. And I never did have his cape, and this is actually a cape that I made. And the best best trick I can tell you guys is uh, the Walmart flea marketing where you find them old notebooks that has the vinyl on them and just cut it off. Same kind of vinyl. <laughs> you can about make any cape. Like I said, the worst thing you can find, I can't find beige. So I'm, going, I'm trying to find the company who makes this and see if I just can't order probably like 10 notebooks of beige and just dissect them all up. I know that sounds horrible, but I would love to get some of that uh, vinyl. Oh, you're welcome, Stephen. Any way I can help, brother. Like I said, if you got any more questions, go to Facebook, Sexton Creations. You can send me a message there. Uh, send me some pictures if it's something don't look right, if something's not coming out for you. And I, any way I can help you out, brother, I'm here to do it. So don't don't mind at all. Please send it my way. All right. A 3PO here. And this is the one with the metal rivet. He's in really great shape. He's I think this yeah, his limbs were a little loose. That's the only bad thing about these. It's hard to find the original one that don't have shaky limbs it's really hard and i got a really nice it's not in here but i got a really nice the the best one i think was the removable limbs i think all together that was the the best version of him and another droid like i said i'm a huge here's my r2 and this is the r2 uh, i did not i have not redone this one because he's not in that bad of shape he's not perfect by no means but he's not bad enough. I don't. I don't want to. Don't want to mess with him. Like I said, I've, I got like five or six other R twos that I've redone. But this is the probably the one of the oldest figures I've ever had. And like I said, and it's it's not a total loss. So I mean, he 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 looks rough, but I like it. So same way with my R five. See here. You think me doing all the restorations, I'd probably done restored every one of these, but I I don't mind. I mean, if they're kind of shot, then I'll work on them. But, you know, if they're a little rough, I really don't care. And my R5 ain't too bad. I actually, I redone several of these guys. I mean, I can make them look just like they come right out of the package. But like I said, the, my first ones, I tend just to leave them as they are, just like this. And then if I acquire new ones, I, I clean them up. So I, I mess with the new ones, but I don't mess with the old ones too much. So and I got the, the little snaggle tooth here. And I got a blue one from uh, Smith Lords. I like it. And like I said, it's it's a cool little toy. It goes a uh, I got it on my uh I got a cantina bar and I got him with I got him. Oh, and I gotta show you guys something. Uh, I almost forgot. I got something new yesterday. I have been looking for one for, oh my gosh, this has been a banner year on me finding uh, old toys that I've not had in 20 to 30 years. So hold on one second, guys. Let me show you something. Good surprise. Very good surprise. Hi. All right, guys, coming in here. I don't know if you caught a glimpse of the color. All right, here we go, guys. When I seen this yesterday, I about had a fit. Let's see here, and here we go. Check it out, guys. 
Fung from the 1970s Flash Gordon Filmation cartoon. Been looking for this guy for ages. I got him and Flash Gordon on my Cantina bar set. And, and, and here's the cool thing. He's even got his tail intact. That I was quite shocked. And the way I found him, I was at Battlegrounds last night, doing some work, trying to help him straighten up, getting prepared for the night. It been the last night. And I was up there talking to the other owner, Jason. And we was just shooting a bull. And then to my left, inside the counter, there's like where a drawer, there's like an inco, like where a drawer, small drawer goes into. But they got the drawer out of it, and it's just a shelf. And it's just full of junk. And I look in there, and I see this color orange. And there's, if you're a toy collector and a toy hunter, there are certain colors that's like programmed in your head, like you're constantly on radar. Like Castle Gray Skull Green. That's like automatic. If you're going by a flea market or whatever, you're looking for that Castle Gray Skull Green. Well, this is one of those other colors that my radar is always attuned to look for. And when I seen it, man, boom, I was like a bird dog. I dug in there, pulled it out. It was in a sandwich bag. It was him and uh, two Micronaut figures. And I hadn't seen the little Micronauts, oh gosh, 30 years since I've seen those guys. The only time I've actually seen them is on Toy Ploy, Dave's channel. Uh, he done, a, gosh, two or three different uh, episodes on those. Of amazing. Yeah, guys, I know, you know, Dave's just awesome. Dave, Dave's just a great guy and does amazing work. See, uh, see, Retro Blasting really got me into vintage figure collecting. Because of him, I know, uh, have the complete Indiana Jones. You got the complete Indiana Jones Kenner collection? I am jealous. <laughs> oh, my God. I only got, like, two or three pieces. The Well of Soul is, like, one of them that I, oh, God, just, man. That stuff is, like, crazy, stupid, expensive. Man, worse than Star Wars ever thought about beating but so, dude, I love. Send me some pics of that collection, dude. I'd love to see it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. PayPal credit. Yeah, I couldn't imagine what that credit. Woo! That stuff is outrageous. That's why I've not. I, I've had my hands on a well sold. Probably there's a guy up here in Knoxville at uh, Fanboy, and he's it's got like a four hundred and twenty five, four hundred seventy five dollar. But it's still in the box. But still, I, I can't do it. I, I just, if it was bigger and more awesome, maybe, but it's, it, it's tiny. And I just, uh, I can't spend 400 some dollars on something that small. So I just can't do it. Now, here's my Hoth Han Solo. And everything. So another good favorite. Like I said, I loved all the Hoth series guys. Really good. I got a Leia here. Uh, a new hope Leia. pretty decent collect uh, condition here capes in great condition original cape it's got a little bit of staining somehow i don't know but it's got like a little peachy almost like a red stain kind of like going there and i've tried cleaning it and i'm afraid to get too rough with it for a, you know this is very old vinyl I'm afraid it'll fall apart. And I'll tell you one thing, guys. Keep scotch tape away from vinyl. You Man, you almost can't get it off. I'm just telling you, scotch tape and vinyl are not friends. So don't get don't get scotch tape near it. Let's see here. All right. Oh, and here's one of my other favorite things here. I love the power droids, the gaunt droids. Really like these guys. I don't know how many of you are. I got one of these. I picked this up. I don't get much at that Disney store. But every once in a while, a blue moon, they actually have something decent. And like I said, I don't collect much of this line. But I got the Gaunt Droid Diecast. And this is one heck of an amazing figure, guys. It really is. God, it's got the weight. Oh, my God. This thing's like two pounds. I mean, it's, it's got some serious weight about it. And the details are just intense. So, if you and, that, and these things, unfortunately, have kind of went up on the secondary market. So, if you guys come across one of these, I think they're going for like 45 or 50 bucks. But if you can find one 30 or under, uh, if you're a fan of these kind of droids, 
grab it. Anything under 30 bucks, it's he's worth it. See here. Awesome, awesome. Thank you, Romel. Definitely got to check that out. See here. Steven, the Buddy Cop series of IG-88 and the Gaunt Girl is Disney's Plus series. My heart is waiting for it. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah, Disney Plus, like I said, uh, I'm hoping to see more characters like this on The Mandalorian. And I hope on The Mandalorian you get to see more like Hammer. That's the only thing I did. I seen a lot of weird looking new characters back there. And I hope, I wish they would go back to like A New Hope in the bar and get more of the Walrus Man characters in the, in the, in the Hammerheads. I think that would be such a, a good way to take homage to the original Star Wars. And it would just look cool. Some of these new designers of these aliens on Star Wars, it's just, I am not impressed. Like the last movie, remember the scene where they had done that charge on them look alien looking horses on the top of the Imperial ship? I just thought that whole scene was just, just a joke. I just thought, you know, what would have been cool instead of those, that, uh, the, the girl with the black curly hair, instead of her being on one of them funky looking horses, I think it would have been much better if they were on Tauntauns, but like a summer version Tauntaun with less hair. Now that would have been cool as heck, I'll tell you. That would have been much better than them stupid looking horses with costumes on them. So, so that, that's just my opinion, guys. I don't rag too much on the movies, but, but that was a stupid scene. What made it even worse, the movie before that was that whole stampede of those horse looking things. And that didn't go and then during that casino and that didn't go over. So they turned around and did it. And it's, they keep re repeating saying goof ups. I don't know why they do that. Alpha Tron. Boy, buddy, you barely slid in here. Glad to see you, brother. Yes, love vintage Kenner. I, I'm, I have to agree with you. I love these older toys. And I'm telling you what, guys, I just picked up the new uh, three and three quarter Mandalorian and uh, Cara Dune, court, well, Cara, you know, Cara Dune. And they was cool. They was at a good price. The card back suck. Oh, that's, that's, that's very annoying, Hasbro. Uh, them, they're just bold. All the crap, they're just thin. I'm no fan of the Disney trilogy. Yeah, me neither. I'm just, I, I like Solo. Not a bad movie. It, it, if you went into it as just that this is going to be a good, fun Star Wars movie, you would definitely get pleased. If you went in as cynical, trying to pick everything out, ugh, I'm not that way. And I, I love Rogue One. I thought Rogue One was amazing. And the way it led up to right when A New Hope kicked off, and Vader, sorry, when you end a movie with Vader kicking everybody's butt, you can't go wrong. I'm telling you. See, that's how Star Wars should be right now. And it just, uh, don't get me on, don't get me on this tangent. I'll, I'll be here another hour just tearing them up. So, Mando in the Wild. I tell you where to find Mando. Uh, go to your books a million. Go to the bookstores. I found mine at, I went to like three different Disney shops, four different Game Stops, three different Walmarts. Nothing, 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 nothing. Went to a books a million. Choo, choo, choo. Found him that quick. Check check your books a million. Odd places. Don't check where you think you should find it. Go where you think you shouldn't find it. See, Rogue One is one of the acceptable Disney. Yeah, like I said, Rogue One and Solo was my favorite two out of the five. It really, really was. So, see here. I see. I love the tie. Uh, yeah, Ty from Solo got the model kit. Awesome. I love model kits. I, I said I got the uh, Bandai R2 and R5. Love those. Highly detailed. They, they feel a little lightweight, but they still look amazing. So excited as a kid on Christmas. Yes. Great toys uh, and everything. And I said these sci-fi toys. See, when I was a kid, before I got into Star Wars, I was into Planet of the Apes. Oh, and I got some apes in the mail right now. My apes are supposed to be here Monday, I believe. Monday, maybe Tuesday, but I'm hoping Monday. I got a uh, ape soldier, Migo style. And I got the Dr. Zayas. And I got a broken Cornelius just because he had a great head, but he's like missing a leg. But I got another body. 
but still i got me some apes on the way and i said that was my first i had uh, the the plan of the apes and i had the batman and robin and, and spider-man that was my that was my first uh action figures as a kid was the Mego style stuff so I, i'm very excited about my apes coming and like i said the reason i love plan the apes the plan of the apes was really my go-to sci-fi thing before Star Star Wars came around, and and I had the cartoon The Flash Gordon, so it was very few things out there. But then when Star Wars came, they kind of like took the best of the Flash Gordon, the best of the Planet of the Apes. They took George Lucas was smart. He done his homework, took what worked in all these different sci-fi genres, and just slapped it on one product. And and we all seen how that turned out. So amazing. The uh, oh, the example of Super Seven, the fifty. Well, if it's an exclusive, fine. If if you're if you're into ex exclusives, uh, but just a fifty dollar figure being the norm, I think it's it's a bit ridiculous. I, honestly, the Black Series, it kills me to pay twenty bucks for the Black Series figure, and and I think for one of these guys right here, like the new style. Uh, I think eight dollars and twenty. I think it was, was it almost thirteen dollars for the hyper articulated. I think that's fine, but I don't don't think. But I think actually the the hyper articulation should be should come down to more like eleven dollars, like ten ninety nine, and these guys should be more like seven ninety nine. So, but I think what I wish they would do, like I said, I think the three and three quarter inch should be more like a seven point articulation, maybe a nine. And leave the hyper articulation more for the six inch scale. And I think the six inches should come down to like 15 bucks. I think $15.99 would be a much better price for what we get. I, I really do. I think the whole 20 bucks, and then if you go to GameStop, you're, you're like $22.99, It's almost like five dollars more. And that's once you start getting it, and like some of these figures that come out in the 30 bucks. Uh Whatever you know, I, I won't do it. Uh, I'll I always find a deal somewhere. So be patient and wait on it. So I'm not a big fan of that. So see, speaking the truth. Thank you very much. And well, I mean, bottom line, guys, it's if this is supposed to be enjoyable, and I don't know about you guys, I'm not hurting on money, but at the same time, I got a wife, I got a kid, I got grandkids, you know. This can get expensive if you don't watch it. And the last thing, what really kills me as a collector, what takes the kind of the fun out of it, when, A, you can't find something you're looking for. And then when you do find it, it's like, damn, it's, you know, secondary market. And they got a Mando out for 40 bucks. I ain't going to pay $40. That's, you know, it's, but you want it. But then that, there's, that, there's that sucker who went and found four of them, bought all four. And now he's scalping the other three, and you just want to choke the hell out of him. It, it, just, it just takes that. I, that's why I am more of a collector than a buy, buyer seller. Now, I do sell, I do flip He Man toys just because I, I luck up and find them at a good price. And I, but I used to redo the Star Wars. Now, if I find Star Wars figures cheap, I just I just gotta hoard them up. I take care of them. I put them up. I, I sold some stormtroopers last year, and as soon as I sold it, I regretted it. And I made some profit off of it, but I just as soon as I sold them, I mean, two weeks later, I'm out trying to find more to fill up my case again. So I didn't enjoy selling the stormtroopers. So the next stormtroopers I get, they just go in my case. So here, let's see. See, Michael, see, because Hasbro has become cheap to make it increase profit margin. Yeah, they make stuff. Exactly. They, The cards are cheaper. Uh, even the bubble a little bit softer. Just like the, the cheap water bottles. You pick them up and they just kind of crumble in your hand. <laughs> it's kind of like they're Star Wars bubbles anymore. Uh, thank you. Thank you. And uh, thank you, Michael. Appreciate that. And uh, it's this, you know, guys, I'm not here to tell anybody how to collect. But the best way I can tell you how to collect is collect what you love. If if you don't like repos, just don't like it. Don't make a big deal out of it if somebody else likes it. Do collect what you love and, and, and just enjoy it. And if you see someone else collecting something different, you, you know, 
you know, two thumbs up, be happy for them. You know, this show should be fun. You know, like, I ain't gonna lie, guys, getting to share this with you guys, showing you kind of like, I don't ever show this to other people. So this is, this is what it's supposed to be, a, com a community, just chit-chatting here, reliving our childhood memories. And like I said, I, I just love these things right here. They're just, they bring me, every time I open up, it's like Christmas morning again. I just, I enjoy it the same every time. It just, it, it never diminishes. And that's, that's something that I love about this stuff. Uh, the new figures, the new toys don't do that for me. I, it's, I don't know. That's, that's nostalgia for you, I guess, you know, see here, even the retro collection can't even, <laughs> yeah, can't even hold their weapons. I've never took one out of the package, so I truly don't know. But I've seen enough videos on it where I agree with you. See, uh, yeah, the retro collection should have been the classic figures that we never got. See, problem with Hasbro doesn't think the three and three quarters is viable anymore. And I agree. I don't think that I think they think their big stock is the six inch scale, which I think, like I said, but the three and three quarter, they did, it's just wasted opportunities. I mean, to me, it's you guys seen that I've done a video about a month ago on these. Uh, they kind of look anime ish and they're almost like four inch to five inch scale of figures. Like, what the hell y'all doing? This all the money and tooling you guys wasted on that, you could have done on some new spaceships at a good price. Now, that's what we're hurting on is three and quarter, three and three quarter inch spaceships, really cool ones. Because, Lord of God, how many. See what the last three Millennium Falcons they really botched those crappy things up. Horrible. Let's see here. Thank you, thank you guys. Well, guys, we've been here a little over 50 minutes. See here, more Tarkin and snow, snow speeders, uh, less repeats. Exactly. Uh, what do you guys think about the new uh, six inch scale snow speeder? I think it looks amazing. But I am going to go on a limb here and say it's greatly overpriced at $120. Uh, it's a two-man figure uh, ship, just like the Land Speeder. We got the Land Speeder for about, uh, if I'm not mistaken, 60 bucks, and it came with a figure. I think, truly, guys, the land, the, the new Stowe Speeder should roughly be about, honestly, I think it should be $59. I think this $120 marker, and, and I, I'm, I'm here to reason, I'm thinking the reason why it's so high I think they've done a short run. I don't think they've done a full run on this thing. So let's see here. Yeah, they like 50 different scales, dividing the market up. Right. It's it's ridiculous for me. I, I agree with you 100% on that. Yeah, these new little characters that are out, and it's, they're just look stupid. See, guys, when I was a kid, let me grab the, the oh, yeah, we hadn't showed Obi-Wan Kenobi. These guys came out. And they truly represent the the inspiration of the character that, that, that played in the movie. Now, they, are they 100% likeness? No. Is it photorealistic? No. But it's pretty darn close. Like the Han Solo. That's no Harrison Ford. We all can agree with that. But guess what? When we were kids, I don't remember one damn time anybody complaining that this didn't look like Harrison Ford. No one cared. We were kids. We got decent figures that I would say 90 to 95% represented the figures that we looked at in the movie. They didn't have no cartoony feel about them. And guess what? They were great, and we love them, and we still love them today. So why, after 40 years, have we got proof that you don't have to dumb a kid down, give them what give them some just a touch of reality, and they'll love it. So they know and there's no sense having the photo reel. In a childish version. Just stupid. Waste money. Hasbro, you just waste so much money. I'm going on a tangent here, guys. I'm getting fired up. <laughs> See here. He was a 90s kid. Uh, X-Wing back. Childhood. Don't seem to have any interest in doing vehicles. Uh, the last the AT-AT and the U-Wing. Yeah, the, the AT-AT has been great. Just way too pricey. So... I honestly, guys, I wish they just re-released the 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 powers of the Force spaceships again, which was the original modes, and just come out with new paint jobs with those toys. And I, I think it'd probably just work out, and it'd be cheaper. So, oh yeah, the Nerf fight. 
Nerf and Star Wars do not need to go together ever. Never. The, no, two different. No. No Nerf. I hate Nerf. Nerfs for footballs. That's it. <laughs> or the dark crap, but not Star Wars. Yeah, total but I, I if I was that guy who was worked on every Millennium Falcon, and I'm sure he got forced to do it, but somewhere down the line, you just gotta draw a line and just say no. But I'm sure there's some his boss made him do it. So it's either that or don't have a job. So yeah, we did we ever miss it as a kid? No. Yeah, it sucked. <laughs> well, guys, like I said, I'm gonna let you guys go here. Like I said, don't forget eight o'clock in the morning. 1980s beast i'm going to be doing a, a video on that going to change the camera view around a little bit and also too guys if you can join me tomorrow also at going to live feeds them all tomorrow at two meet the family i'm going to try to have santiago cerillo on phone so he can talk to you guys he's from the walking dead he also starred in the two of my paranormal chaser movies that i wrote and directed and stuff so so come hang out with me twice tomorrow. I know it's asking a lot for you, but guys, I want to appreciate. We had a great live feed rolling tonight. See that Falcon. Was, <laughs> I agree with you. That was, that was, that was, that was embarrassing. No, the solo uh, Falcon was embarrassing. That was, that just sucked. So there's a difference between suck and embarrassing. And the solo one was embarrassing, but guys, thank you all so much. Glad to see some new people out here. Uh, Emil, thank you for joining. I'm glad you're back, brother. Can't wait to check out some of that your artwork and stuff. You guys have a great evening. I'll see you all tomorrow morning and hopefully tomorrow afternoon. Enjoyed it, guys. Keep sharing. Keep telling people about the toy smuggler. I'm here to take care of you guys. If you guys eat any ideas on episodes you want me to cover, shoot me an email. Uh, shoot me a message here. Facebook, Sexton Creations. Just throw it at me and I'll do it, guys. Guys, take care. I'm the Toy Smuggler. Be safe out there. Crazy times. Crazy times. I'm the Toy Smuggler. Y'all have a good evening.